Hello and welcome to this build of the Airfix 172nd scale Wellington Mark II. Remember, if you enjoy it and find it useful, please do click the like button below. And while you're there, subscribe to my channel to see more builds and other projects. This Wellington is a variant of a kit first released in 2018, so it's a relatively new tooling. The kit is skill level 3, so for the more experienced modeler, and comes with three flying hours if you're an FX club member and you collect them. Let's see what you get in the box. First there's the painting guide for two versions of the aircraft, then the instructions, the decals and bags of sprues. You'll notice there are a lot of transparencies in this kit. There's two gun turrets, plenty of windows and two options for the main canopy. Then the main parts, the fuselage has intricate moulding inside showing the geodetic structure which will require some painting. Then there are panels for the wings top and bottom, very well textured to reflect this diamond shaped structure again. Then there's a sprue with internal bits and pieces, plus the tail planes and ailerons. Then another with all the detail part for the inside and the undercarriage. Finally there's this smaller sprue with the fin and rudder, propellers and engines. Now this is where the Mark II differs from other Wellingtons as it had Merlins instead of the more usual Bristol, Pegasus or Hercules radials. So the engine cowlings, radiator parts and exhausts are specific to this Mark. What is a little surprising is the flash among the structural parts that will need a bit of cleaning up later. The moulds are no more than three years old but the bits are starting to need a little attention. Nothing too horrendous though. The kit comes with two sets of markings. One is for an aircraft of number 305 Squadron, a Polish unit in the RAF, in the standard night camouflage of dark earth and dark green over a black underside. For those interested, this is the Type A scheme. Also in the Type A scheme is the other aircraft, one from number 214 Squadron RAF, based, like so much of Bomber Command, in Lincolnshire. The decal sheet is relatively small. There are the common decals, instrument panels, national roundels, markings and stencils. Then there are the bits that are specific to the two aircraft. One interesting thing is they've provided slightly larger centre spots for the 214 Squadron aircraft, as some photos show this. You just lay it over the common side roundel. On to the instructions, and one interesting feature are the parts highlighted in green. Now, FX say that there are parts included for the sake of completeness and accuracy that might be very difficult to see in the finished model. These pieces are marked in green on the instructions and you can decide whether or not to bother with them. They don't affect the overall look of the kit, but with big side windows, the parts could be visible if you look very carefully, say with a torch. Anyway, I'm going to include them all, but I'll highlight them in the video like this. Okay then, on with the build. As always, the first thing I'm going to do is wash all the parts in a gentle detergent solution, rinse and dry them, then give them a gentle coat of primer. Now always remember to sand away sprue marks and anything from mouldings and to dry fit before committing anything with glue. So my first job is to tidy up the main cabin floor with a craft knife and then paint the floor in aluminium with some raised parts on the basic floor painted black. I'm also going to dry brush a bit of bit detail. I'm not entirely sure why, as it will probably be completely hidden. I guess it's just force of habit. Next is the rear of the cockpit with the frame in aluminium and the panel in interior green. Now for interior green I use Vallejo IDF green because it seems to be a pretty close match. This panel then gets glued to the front end of the main floor. Now 
Next I'm adding the wireless operator's desk and radios, then his chair and the back wall of his office. The rear of the bomb bay comes as this transparent part because there are all very small windows in it. Most of the part is painted aluminium. You can tidy up any slight overspill with the end of a cocktail stick if you've been using acrylic paint. Next we add the control column to the cockpit floor. Both parts have been painted on the sprue. Then the pilot seat can be glued to the cockpit rear wall and the cockpit floor beneath it. Note that the floor should dip down slightly. Airfix say five degrees below the horizontal. Next in the main cabin area we add what I imagine is the Elsan chemical toilet and we paint that aluminium. An optional part for us perhaps, but not if you're on an eight hour bombing mission. Next I'll start preparing the fuselage halves and this includes cutting the holes for the undertail antenna. Then I'll give the whole interior a coat of brick red. I'm using an airbrush here, but it could be just as easy really to brush it on. The insides of the gun turrets get some interior green. Next is a big job, the inner aluminium structure. Now you can paint this in if you want the detail entirely up to you but what I prefer to do is dry brush it with aluminium and then just sort of paint in any glaring spills onto the brick red. The interior really isn't going to be too visible so do as much detail as you think you need. The visible parts of the structure on the outside also do need some aluminium. And while we've got the fuselage here, there's a small strip of plastic that needs to be trimmed from the forward turret area. With the aluminium dry, we can start adding pre-painted interior components. First we've got some gas bottles, I'm guessing they're probably oxygen, and then what looks like a largest rest bunk. Then some electronic looking stuff. I'm really not an expert on Wellington interiors. Then the main cabin floor, which is also the top of the bomb bay, can be set into place in the fuselage. Now while that's setting up I'll apply the instrument decals to the instrument panel that I've already painted on the sprue. All this makes it easier to hold still. The panel then gets fitted. I do it with the fuselage upside down as it makes the panel easier to position. Then there is the forward frame of the cockpit area. Back now in the cabin and I'm placing the rear wall of the navigator's office, then adding his desk and his chair. Working back towards the rear of the cabin, there's another frame to fit, but this one is important for the structure of the kit. And that's followed by two more frames, both of which are optional. Then I'll add the latticework front wall of the bomb bay, as well as the painted transparent one at the rear of the cabin floor. The next frame that goes in is at the rear near the tail plane. This supports a piece of the aircraft's keel that also includes the tail wheel box. Now once this is set correctly over the front tail plane frame, you can add the rear frame as well. With so much uh, setting up in the port side of the fuselage, we can attach a few more bits of equipment to the inside of the starboard side of the cockpit on these locator holes. 
but do make sure that this area here is clear to accept the cockpit wall. Next we add uh, another piece of equipment for the interior. I'm not sure why this one isn't set on the starboard half though. Back to the starboard half we can now fit the flare chute which is also used for dropping propaganda leaflets or chaff radar countermeasures later on. We also add another line of gas bottles and a rack of what I suppose are parachute flares. Our next decision is whether to have the crew door open or closed and paint the relevant part. I have decided on open. Next the gun turrets are going to need some mounting plates. The one at the front sits on a tab and butts up against the moulding in the fuselage as you can see here. And it's the same with the rear turret mounting although that's a much bigger part. With all of this complete we're now ready to join the fuselage halves together. The last thing we do is slot in the main spar which supports the wings later on. Then the two halves can be lined up and joined together. We'll use some clamps to set everything up overnight. On then to the wings. First we have to build the undercarriage bays. These sit on tabs against the inside of the lower wing. The two halves, already painted and weathered, get glued to a cross member. Then the whole assembly slots into the lower ring. It is a bit of a faff getting the gear doors through, but they do fit very snugly. On the lower port wing, there are two lights. These come as a single transparency that glues in place. I always paint the back of lights with silver to give the impression of a reflector. Then we can fit the two halves of the wing together, then clamp them up to set. Then all we have to do is the same again, but for the other wing. When those are done, we can add the ailerons. Now these slot nicely into the recesses on the wings. The tail fin comes in two pieces as does the rudder. These all glue together very simply. Likewise each horizontal stabiliser or tailplane comes in two parts but with a one part elevator. The next job on my list is masking the cockpit canopy and the other transparencies. Now I've purchased a pre-cut set for the Wellington Mark 1 as it works the same on the Wellington Mark 2 we're building. Masking the long fuselage windows and I'll also get round to doing the gun turrets. Another job for whilst the bigger bits are setting up is preparing and painting the bombs. These come in halves, six bombs in total. With the fuselage set properly I'm going to add the cockpit canopy and the rest of the windows. I use a PVA glue as it reduces the risk of glazing from the vapours given off by polystyrene cement or superglue, but you do have to let it dry for quite a long time for it to be fully secure, an hour or two at least. But when they're finished they do look like an advert for Edward Masks. While the PVA is drying I'm going to go back to the undercarriage. Now the rear strut of the undercarriage leg fits into this hole on the cross member. I just push fit the main legs for the moment to set the rear strut in place. I'll take them out again before priming the kit for paint later as it's easier to mask. Then I can fit the firewall of the engine bay. I'm going to paint the radiator grills before I assemble them 
they're a lot easier to reach at the moment. Now despite what the instructions say, I found the easiest way to do this is to fit the radiator front to half the nacelle first, then the panel behind it. Now fit the halves of the nacelle together and then you can just slide in the radiator exhaust duct. Then we simply glue the completed nacelle to the front of the wing and repeat for the other side. Again, while waiting for glue to set, time for some other jobs, including painting the propellers and also painting the bombs yellow. I'm also painting the bomb bay racks, which include the folded open doors. Next, I'm fitting the propeller shafts to the nacelles. You can decide whether you want the props to be able to spin or not. I'm also going to add these strange fuel dump pipes, I believe they are, to the wings. And then I'm also going to paint the tail wheel while it's still on the sprue. On to the gun turrets now. And the first thing to do is to paint the guns for the turrets. The guns themselves are in gun metal. The support's in aluminium. Now I noticed that the left hand gun of each pair was shorter than the right, which I suspect is a moulding issue. Anyway, assembling the halves together is fiddly with big fingers, but they do eventually go together and then into the back shell. When they've set, I use PVA again to fix the turret window transparency, which I've already masked off. I did find poking the guns through a bit tricky. After that, the turret can be pushed into place. Again, a bit of a struggle, possibly because of the masking tape, but we got there in the end. With both turrets in place, I now use the closed bomb bay doors as a mask for the bomb bay, and then give the fuselage a coat of primer. I'm also spraying the top with dark earth. I brush paint the dark green camouflage and the black of the undersides with a wavy brake line. Once the paint has dried, I can start applying the decals. Now, I've kept the rudder and the tailplanes separate for the moment. With decals drying on, I can start adding various other bits, such as the direction finding fairing on the fuselage and also some finish work with other parts like painting the tips of the propellers. I always use white first and then a coat of yellow as this makes the colour stand out so much more. I'll also fit things like the tail wheel doors. I'm also putting the wheels together. Remember to check for the flat spots of the weighting and then I'll paint them with tyre black and steel. The bomb racks are next. Now the front is the deeper end, so make sure your bombs are the right way round. They glue simply and sit on these little supports. And now with all the exterior given a coat of matte varnish, I can start assembly. The wings go on first. I can also take off any window masks as I work my way around the aircraft. With the wings in place, I can attach the propellers and refit the undercarriage legs, this time with glue. I'll fit the fin to the rear fuselage and I'll also fit the bomb racks into the bomb bay. I'll fix the aerial to the lower rear and paint it black and I'll also set in the tail wheel. Then I can fit the tailplanes, the observation dome for the navigator and the engine exhausts. The finished wheels push into place on the undercarriage and rotate quite freely so you can get the flat spot of the weighting exactly where it's needed. Finally the prop spinners go on and the kit is complete.
So there we have it, the Vickers Wellington Mark II. Now I've finished it with a few aftermarket decals for blacked out mid fuselage windows for later in the war. These have bigger roundels and serials, but it is actually the same aircraft as supplied. Now most of the build was a joy, although I found the guns difficult and fragile. Not a kit for the beginner, but good for the more experienced model, as skill level 3 would suggest. Now I hope you found this video enjoyable and interesting or even useful. If you have then please remember to like it below and while you're there why not subscribe to my channel to see the other builds I've done and will do in the future. Thanks so much for watching, see you next time. <music>